Okay, some bonus material on Dr. Buffy the Vampire Slayer from the last video. I couldn't squeeze in all of her tweets and they deserve to be seen. I need to have a shower but I can't be bothered. Life is a struggle. These are the published thoughts of a PhD. Her retweeting as she watches female soccer. So proud of the girls right now. Hashtag Matildas. Vine, yes, go girls. This game is too stressful. I bet she's never done anything at the grassroots levels to help women's soccer. Just a bit of virtue signalling when the national team plays. She probably hates sports, just loves feminist ideology. As expected, she was one of those nutters walking around with yes badges all over her belongings during the voice referendum. As much as I fear the outcome of Saturday's referendum, there's something comforting about the camaraderie of a shared smile with a stranger who also has yes badges plastered all over their bag. I was at a conference just prior to the voice referendum and there were a couple of attendees walking around with yes stickers and pins slapped all over themselves, just like the woman in this clip I'm going to show. They honestly thought that 100% of the other conference delegates were all voting yes in solidarity with them. Man, what a shock to the system it would have been when the vote results came in. Predictably, she was a real COVID fanatic with her most demented tweets coming during that time. Lots of tweets about wearing of masks, reluctance to go back to the office once the lockdowns ended. She embraced it so much that she invented a cute name for lockdowns. Lucky D, we're in Lucky D, we're keeping safe, it's so cool. Freaking out over a couple of COVID cases in her apartment block and then freaking out over a number of people having flu-like symptoms hundreds of kilometres away from her in another bloody state. Religiously taking Covid tests and queuing up for hours at the chemist to get tested. Staring at the TV, awaiting the latest press conference from her saint and saviour, Daniel Andrews. Clearly she's hooked by the fear. It's clear that the entire COVID saga, it gave her life meaning. She also worshipped the other fraud, Brett Sutton. Anyone who broke the COVID rules was in her eyes a super spreader, a selfish jerk. She was absolutely furious to read about the level of non-compliance in Melbourne over the weekend. Yeah, well, while I was out at the protest enjoying the sun, she was stuck at home bitching on the internet and crying to Twitter about her mental health. It says so much about who she is that she got a thrill from freedom being granted only to those who were fully vaccinated. Freedoms are close at hand for fully vaccinated Victorians. For, full stop, fully, full stop, vaccinated, full stop, Victorians. Wow. I've said it before, but women like this, or and even men like this, should not be given any decision-making power. Real question, she asks. Why is there a stigma around dobbing? I bet you she was peeking through the curtains, timing her neighbours when they went out, hand on the phone, ready to call the cops if anyone was a minute over their allocated one hour permitted time outside. If you want to know how Melbourne had such ridiculous lockdowns, well, it's because the government is stacked with these people. They're making the decisions and they're happy to sit at home and take a big government salary. They are the weak and so they need daddy government to tell them that they're safe and put them into lockdowns. She buys baby scales for her cat. She always seems to be suffering from COVID or some sort of flu, which I find very strange for someone who's fully vaccinated. And I imagine her to be the type of woman who would mock a guy over having man flu. Oh, the big man baby has a man flu. Day three, the GP says I'm at the worst and it will start getting better soon. When? My brain for the last few days tries to think of anything. Nothing compares. R.I.P. Sinead. This is Dr. Emma's touching tribute to mark the passing of Sinead O'Connor. Or perhaps it's just another excuse for not getting a research paper done. If you're looking for a fun, simple way to raise your heart rate in the morning, just don't set your alarm. Then wake up an hour and a half after you're meant to start work. Works like a charm. Now, I actually like this one. It's a joke. Well done, Emma. That's your best work. You'll notice I gave her a like for that one. Okay, that's enough. Otherwise, I'm going to end up here all day going through her tweets. Go watch the main video on her if you haven't already. 
and the full video on the plague of PhD grifters.